Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine, natural plant-based fitness nutrition. Well, this, this review is gonna cover a couple of different studies. Um, one just came out, uh, this is a 2024 study. And let me go ahead and jump right into it. But before we get started, let me go ahead and put the disclaimer up. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Okay, so let's go dive right into the study. Uh, this study is called the Microbiome Features Associated with Performance Measures in Athletic and Non-Athletic in Individuals. This is a case control study. This is a good one. And one of the things that I really like about this uh, is not only is it a case control study, but they looked at three different groups. They looked at two different athletic populations, strength athletes, those using resistance training, and endurance athletes. So different type of training altogether and different ability and utilization of our food for energy. Okay, and they compared that to physically active but non-athletic uh, control group. So nice comparison to have both endurance athletes and strength athletes in the same and measuring their endurance output, their VO2 max, as well as the uh, athletic output, which is power and strength. Okay. So what they found was that those that had the best ability had higher amounts of bifidobacterium, two different species of bifidobacterium. You can see it right there on the screen. A bifidobacterium are short chain fatty acid producers or short chain fatty acids are produced by the fermentation or the uh, breakdown of fiber in our gut. So clearly, those consuming higher amounts of fiber, which only comes from plants, were having higher amounts of bifidobacterium uh, that were short-chain fatty acid producers. Real simple. If you've got more short-chain fatty acids, that means those bacteria eat fiber or starches and produce them. And the only way they can do those five, get those fiber and starches is by consuming plants. Now, uh, we now know that uh, polyphenols actually act as a prebiotic too as well. So we can see some of the prebiotics, um, the polyphenols acting as prebiotics uh, to help uh, increase the populations of some of these short chain fatty acid producing species. Now, what they found was that these bacteria that were abundant and those consuming a higher amount of fiber um, strongly associated with increase and in improvements in VO2 max. Okay, so what is VO2 max? The V stands for the rate of which O2 oxygen is maximally utilized by the body to, con to help convert food into energy or convert fat into energy, but what we call fat burning. Fat burning is fat oxidation. Our body uses oxygen to help break apart these molecules. Oxygen is very caustic. So our body has figured out a way to use that to our advantage and use it to uh, liberate the energy in fats, in carbohydrates, and even proteins in order to get utilize that energy. Now, the rate and the maximum amount of rate which your body can convert those substrates into real energy greatly influences our performance output. So this is really important to know this. All right, so let's find out what the results were from this study. The results support the beneficial effects of bifidobacteria species, these fiber eating, uh, butyrate and propionate and acetate short chain fatty acid producers in general fitness and cardio respiratory fitness. So general fitness overall, overall health and performance and cardio respiratory fitness, which means your body's ability to handle endurance or uh, longer term uh, exercises. Okay. So 
this study actually showed that uh, microbiota dependent short chain fatty acid production can be enhanced by consuming high fiber diets, such as the Mediterranean diet, the vegan diet or vegetarian diet, which are basically all eating more plant foods. Fiber only comes in plants. So there is no fiber in any animal product whatsoever. So it's clear that we have both a positive correlation with athletic performance, both in strength and in endurance when you're consuming more plant foods. All right, let's keep going because it gets a little more interesting. <laughs> so previous studies have shown that a fi high fiber intake leads to higher production of short chain fatty acids. There they are, acetate, propionate, and butyrate. Now, these also help reduce inflammation. They help feed our gut cells, the cilial cells that line our gut lining, so they close the gaps and prevent leaky gut. They help with improvement of uptake of nutrients, so you're getting more nutrients into the bloodstream from the food that you're eating when you have a rich source of fiber that, again, helps these bacteria create metabolites that increase our performance. Okay, and contrastingly, on the flip side, negative associations were reported between Bacteroides species and VO2 max. Now, Bacteroides generally goes up with animal proteins and animal fats. When you consume those, you increase Bacteroides species, and this has a negative effect on VO2 max. So the more animal foods you're eating, especially animal proteins and animal fats, you have less performance of VO2 max. Now, how did that translate in actual function? So let's look at that. But before we do, let's just go ahead and confirm this. In a separate study, and you can see the link below, the consumption of animal-based proteins, particularly from red meat and dairy products, may lead to an increase of abundance of bile-tolerant anaerobic bacteria such as Bacteroides. So this is confirmation from other studies saying, yep, this is indeed what's happening. Animal-based proteins, especially animal-based proteins that are higher in saturated fats like meat and dairy, increase these bile-tolerant bacteria that actually decrease our body's ability to perform athletically. So it lowers our VO2 max, our ability to take in oxygen and turn it and help use that oxygen and turn it into usable energy for strength, for power, for endurance. So here we have it real clear that more plant fiber that you consume, the more improvement you're seeing in VO2 max, better performance for the athlete, both strength and endurance. And the more animal protein, and especially animal proteins with saturated fats, the greater the negative or gram-negative bacteria, the bile-resistant bacteria, anaerobic bacteria. These are negative bacteria that decrease our VO2 max. So eating more plants, better performance. Eating more animal products, worse performance, athletic performance. So we're really starting to see the profound effect of a... A, a diet in your dietary choices on your performance outcomes in both strength and endurance. So this next study actually confirms this. A high fat diet aggravates age-related decline in skeletal muscle structure and function, means less strength, less muscle with a higher fat, especially saturated fat from animals this is the biggest one that has this negative impact. When you consume high animal proteins, specifically animal proteins, and high saturated animal fats, this creates more of the negative bacteria, bacteroides bacteria, that populate our gut and then have a negative impact on our physical athletic capabilities, our VO2 max for both strength athletes and for endurance athletes. So that one study said that intense exercise over a prolonged period increases intestinal permeability, which you don't want. That's leaky gut syndrome. It increases oxygen-free radicals, ROS, reactive oxygen species. 
and inflammation. So three negatives are created by working out. Okay, that would be pretty bad if you didn't have plant-based fiber, which reduces that inflammation, antioxidants, which decreases that radical oxygen species, and polyphenols improve all three of those. So in decreasing, um, increasing and improving gut uh, tightness joints. So you have no more gut leaky gut syndrome going on. You have reduced inflammation because of the fiber being consumed and putting out short chain fatty acids, which then feed, nourish and heal those cells that line our gut lining and the antioxidants and polyphenols that improve the uh, inflammation and reduce the radical oxygen species. This is why plant-based athletes can perform sometimes at a much higher level, all, thing, all other things considered uh, the same. So this is how you can consume a high polyphenol, a high antioxidant, high fiber rich diet and get better performance, both in strength gains and power output, as well as endurance gains and uh, overall um, lastability. Okay, um, so this one took it a little bit further. They looked at this uh, study was in soccer athletes, and they found that dark chocolate, which is one of the richest source of polyphenols, uh, positively modulates gut permeability in elite athletes. So these are the top athletes, the pro athletes, going gung-ho. And remember, soccer athletes can play game after game after game after game for series, and they're running almost the entire game with some rest periods, of course, obviously in there. So the really intense exercise, they found that when they were given dark chocolate, which is really rich, very high on the polyphenol scale and antioxidant and even fiber, if it's taken in the whole cacao form, then you're getting all three of those things and it improves and modulate the gut permeability. This allows, prevents the negative impacts from going into the gut and weighing down or decreasing their ability to perform at a very high level. This next study is 2020 study uh, published in Cell Metabolism that gut microbiome fermentation determines the efficacy of exercise in diabetes prevention. So we know that uh, saturated fat in cells is the cause of diabetes, type 2 diabetes. We know that. Fat gets inside the cell, gums up the cell, and then the cell shuts down the receptor sites for insulin. That's insulin resistance. It's resisting the body's ability to let insulin dock and pull in more energy. It's full of fat, and the cell says, no, I've got enough energy here. I'm loaded with fat. I, I can't take in any more energy. That'll be just too much. Um, and it'll interfere with cellular respiration. So what the body does is shut down the insulin receptor site so it won't let any more sugars in. And then that sugar floats around and that's where it becomes dangerous. It's not the sugar that's the cause. The sugar is adding to the problem when you have your cells all gunked up with saturated fat. But we know that exercise, especially intense exercise or prolonged exercise, can help burn up that intracellular fat, use it up for energy, and then free that, and then it improves insulin sensitivity. Then the cell opens back up and says, yeah, now I'm done with all that fat in my cell. I can pull in more energy. So it, it increases insulin sensitivity. But we now know that the gut microbiome determines how effective exercise is for diabetes prevention. Now, this is really important because you could be doing lots of exercise, but eating a really crappy animal-based, fat-based diet, high-protein animal-based diet, and not getting the same benefits from the same amount of exercise when you're consuming a plant-based diet. And this is why Plant-based diets, especially a plant-exclusive diet combined with exercise is so effective with, for those in uh, uh, reversing type 2 diabetes. Um, so that's amazing. All the way down the, from, from elite athletes to overall endurance athletes to muscle and strength athletes everyone because of the influence and the relationship to plant fibers, plant polyphenols, 
plant starches and plant antioxidants, their relationship with our microbiome increasing VO2 max and, and creating a better, more positive environment, whereas consuming higher amounts of animal protein and animal fats does just the opposite. It increases these negative bacteria, which make it more difficult for our body, decreases VO2 max, decreases athletic performance. We know this. We now know the food choices, gut, athletic performance relationship. All of these studies are all basically saying the same thing. When you consume higher amounts of plants, especially whole food plants, high in polyphenol content, that's your dark colored plants, your brightly colored plants, cherries, strawberries, blueberries, uh, your brightly colored vegetables, dark green stuff. These are real rich in polyphenols, rich in antioxidants, rich in fiber and water. All of these things will benefit your, not only your gut health, but through that, they also positively affect your uh, athletic performance. This is why I have focused for Clean Machine on being a plant-centered or plant-based uh, fitness nutrition company, because it's not only improving your health, but it's actually improving your body's ability to perform at a much higher level. Talking to a guy in the gym today, and you know, he's like, uh, he's saying, you don't take testosterone? He goes, you're my age. And I said, no, I do not. No drugs at all in my body, much less testosterone. None, zero. <laughs> no drugs whatsoever in my body and not been there for almost 40 years. So he says, well, I'm actually taking testosterone. I won't mention his name because uh, that's uh, between he and I. He says, and I don't even look, <laughs> I don't look like you. And, you know, I'm 61 and similar age, and he's taking testosterone <laughs> and not doing it. But I said, you're not plant-based. And he goes, oh, no, no, I love my meat. So there is a difference. So testosterone is step one. Testosterone is like the foreman at the construction site. It tells yourself, hey, let's build some muscle. Now, you need step two, which is you need a reason for your body to build muscle. You have to do the resistance training, push it to a limit to a point where your body says, wait a minute, we're getting to the point where we could break. Let's increase the muscle. Let's increase our ability to be strong and add some of that muscle, add some strength to that. So you have number one, let's build a house. Number two, you have to have a reason to be, build the house. You have to have like funding, right? Number three, you have to have building materials. So you have to consume enough protein to meet the demand and needs. Number four, you need leucine. Leucine is actually a stimulant, just like insulin is for getting the cells to take in uh, fats and carbohydrates, glucose, that sort of thing for energy. In, uh, uh, leucine acts the similar way to allow the cells to take in essential amino acids. It's kind of our body's recognizer. If you have enough leucine, we have enough materials to build muscle with. So you need the building blocks. So that's number four. But then once the body is actually transcribed or made these proteins, these little worker bees inside there called heat shock proteins actually have to go grab those long string proteins and fold them, fold them, fold them into these amazing different 3D geometrical shapes. And that's when they become active proteins so that they can be used to build muscle with. Then there are these other heat shock proteins that grab those folded proteins and take them to the muscle. They're called chaperones. And that's how actual muscle gets turned into myofibular uh, substrates, into real materials in your muscle. So that's the whole process. Just telling the body to build muscle, if it doesn't have a, a need to, just like you don't have a you don't have a need to build muscle. If it doesn't have the building blocks to do it, if it doesn't have the cellular door, the key to open up the door to get that building started. And if you don't have the workers, the chaperones and heat shock proteins to actually carry out that and deliver those proteins, that's a five phase different step. It's not just about testosterone. Testosterone is important for both men and women to start the process, to start the conversation, but the cellular 
contract to get the job done is much more complex than that and nuanced. And that's how a plant-based diet, especially with aptogens, adaptogens, herbs uh, like ashwagandha uh, that we see in both uh, our Sublock 80 product uh, and uh, Indian globe thistle, which actually boosts testosterone in men only, not in women, these things can increase your body's ability to build muscle. And that's why they actually work so well. Again, these are the plants that help the other parts of the process, not just the protein, not just the testosterone. We've only been looking at the front half of the equation and not the back half of the equation. Testosterone and protein. Okay, that's great for the building blocks and the command to go build, but you need the workers and these come, these are stimulated and nurtured by plant nutrients, especially the adaptogen group of nutrients. But also we can see polyphenols effects uh, such as urolithin A increasing the body's ability to produce these heat shock proteins that actually carry out the work of turning those proteins into actual muscle. That's the back half of the equation, and that's wholly missing. It's not discussed in sports nutrition, but you'll hear it from me because that's exactly what's going on in metabolism. That's how muscle is actually built. And now we see on the very front end how microbiome plays an effect. So not just protein, it's the type of protein. When you're consuming plant proteins that are attached to polyphenols and fiber, no animal products are. These help the microbiome. These influence the outcomes and the output of VO2 max, allowing your body to basically perform at a much higher level than you would consuming only the animal proteins and the building blocks themselves. Well, I hope you're starting to get a bigger picture of why plants can have such a positive and profound impact, not only on your health and your microbiome, vis-a-vis -vis your health, but your microbiome and your uh, sports performance, athletic performance, your ability to build muscle, build strength, build endurance through a plant-based diet. I hope you get the best results possible. I know it's frustrating for guys in the gym or guys on the track that want to improve their times, want to improve their strength, want to build muscle and are not getting the results that they're looking for, even though they're working so hard to try to get there. I want to tell you <laughs> what, what the missing piece is here, what, what you're missing in getting that level of performance active, and it's the plants. It really is the plants, it's that simple, and it's our plants relationship with our microbiome and our own physiology to perform at its best. That's what I want for you. That's why I do these. That's why I share these studies. And that's why I review them with you so I can explain what these studies were, are talking about in a way that most people can not only understand them, but get them and then be able to apply them in their lives for positive outcomes in your own success. I wish you the best of health and thank you for joining me. We'll be back with more reviews and research and interviews with other folks. And um, I'll keep sharing the information that to improve your health, to improve your fitness levels and get you the best results for longevity as well. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next week.